If we head to the right, we get an air, a, a new area outside of the town. And I can't go underwater right now. If I go underwater, I'll eventually take damage until I die. there's a life system. Another thing so I can gain an extra life, but I'm pretty sure you have unlimited lives and continues. That being said, I don't have a lot of health, so I do need to be careful. If I knock the fountains into the ground, then they'll create platforms I can step on. Let's keep moving. If we use our ability on that particular fountain, it opens up our first hidden path. And I'm probably going to die in a second. I only have one hit point left. We'll switch back to regular Firebrand so we can keep our flight ability. This area is the subterranean cave and right after I switch, that happens. The G Gargoyle can cling to walls too, just like regular Firebrand. particular section, again, breakable blocks that I can't break at the moment. I think the G Gargoyle's flame does more damage to these wisp pillar things. Yeah. damage them at all. Oh, that's not life, that's money. Unfortunately, like... Ah, oh, come on. The Mega Man games. There's no way to hot swap your gargoyle abilities on the fly. You have to do it via the inventory menu. It doesn't look like we got any sort of penalty for dying. I wasn't sure if you, you lose your money or anything else, but unless there's a legitimate game over screen, I don't think there's a penalty for dying. I do know that there are, there are certain checkpoints, and if you die in some areas, you get sent back. So there, there's an incentive not to just be careless. Mega Man esque type enemy. This particular section of the case, we have these 
torches that are not lit. If we use our regular fire, we can light them up and illuminate the area, which will make the bats retreat. If you walk around, they'll sort of fly at you and be a nuisance. But if you light up the area, they'll go away. That particular enemy eats your flames. It'll extinguish the ones that you ignite and try and plunge everything into darkness. Ah, full health. All right. Yeah, I think the bats won't attack you at all when it's dark. It's best to keep moving. I don't think you can actually kill those. I think you can shoot them all day and nothing will happen. They'll just go away when there's no more flames to eat. And next up... We have another boss. big sort of slime eyeball creature, who I think is called Avnunu. It'll slowly inch up the vertical corridor here. I think it'll hurt you if you get stuck in its slime and actually touch the eyeballs, but we can't actually fight it until it gets to the top here. And the way the fight with Ovnunu works is it'll slowly spit out individual eyeballs, which will home in on your position and try and run into you. Overall, they're not too hard to snipe, but it'll start firing more and more of them as the fight wears on. And they're a little bit small and hard to hit if you let a bunch of them fill the screen up. The grounded... Fire breath for the G Gargoyle does a lot of damage to him, but it means they have to be pretty much right in front of you in order for your shots to land. If you actually jump on the slime, you'll get sort of slowed and be harder to move. Once all the slime is, or all the satellite eyeballs are done, then the main eye will come out. And this is sort of the actual fight. The eye will sort of orbit the entire room and shoot you with slime. Ah. Might actually be easier to go in with base fire for that one. Just because having the mobility is, is useful. They're full up on health, so we don't need to really bother with uh, power ups on the side. I think it's kind of a neat touch that the, the main eyeball sort of tracks to your position. That looks like two direct hits will stop the eyeballs. It? 
All right, we'll go ahead and swap back to default flame for this particular fight. Our fire is going to do a little bit more, less damage, but being able to get around is probably going to play in our favor a little bit. As we do more damage, the boss will change color until it's dead. It's a common theme with the bosses in this game. And then once Ovnunu dies, get another crest ability. You got a piece of the fire crest called Buster. With it, you can break through stone. The reason why I did this particular fight first is because. Having the ability to break down walls is very useful. What we can do is go back to town and test it in order to get to the shop that was blocked off before. The buster projectiles look like this. They're sort of these green fireballs. In addition to breaking blocks, they have a bigger hit radius as well. If I shoot at these jars that are on my level, while the regular flame would go over them with Buster, I can break them when they're right in front of me. I don't know if it does more damage, but just because it, it tends to hit things easier, I use the Buster as my default breath attack. At least for now. When I get something better, I'll use that. Alright, this is another one of the item merchants. Black Lotus. Same basic things, but this one is different. Ginseng. This restores all your vitality. This is the one I usually spend all my money on. It's sort of a panic button when fighting difficult bosses. If you're about to die and you pop a Ginseng, you'll recover all your health, which is pretty useful. I should do it for this particular area. I want to go back to the subterranean caves. There were some breakable wall sections in there that we couldn't get at. What we'll do is kind of go systematically as we proceed here. Since I want to do a 100% completion run. I will backtrack through areas that I know I can get to in order to get the stuff there. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. We, we don't need to waste much time. We'll proceed through this area. Let's see what we got. Another vellum. Okay, because of the bigger hit range on my buster shot, I can also hit these enemies on the ground. And I can destroy the flame pillars. I assume that means overall a shot's more damage. And you can fire two at once on screen, which is also useful. Once you have the buster shot, at least for now, there's real no reason to use... Really no reason to use the base fire at all. Except for lighting the torches. I don't think the buster can do that. We'll, we'll find out once we get to the next area. Yeah. One of the downsides is you can't light torches. This whole darkness concept does come up in some other areas, and you need a fire-based breath attack in order to light things up. 
But it looks... I'm not sure if the ghost went away because the fire was gone, or if because my shot killed it. I'm just gonna find out. Oh yeah, okay. The buster shot is strong enough to kill the fire-eating ghosts. That's good to know. I think that's it for this particular area. 